Hey, I'm Nick Athlon Gamer. Welcome back to F1 Manager. This is episode 48, second race of our third season now. And James Irwin, our race engineer, uh, first race engineer, which means he's with Albin, uh, has now leveled up to a 79 overall. All of his points uh, in terms of leveling up have gone into feedback. So you have three categories for the race engineer. Pit crew management, which will have an impact right this along with the pit crew and their level that combination makes up what your pit stop times are he's pretty good at that uh, communication for me is by far the least important this is how quickly you have an affinity built between them and a driver so if you have a long-term driver it's never a thing it's only one when you have a new driver and it only lasts for you know a, a period of time now there's penalties yes and those penalties can hurt for a little bit okay fine communication is good because you get up to speed faster but once you're up to speed it has no bearing whatsoever so for me it is the it's the one that'll never get leveled up until the other two are at a hundred out of a hundred and then the last one is feedback. Now, this is the area where our team has had some serious problems. And you could see at least part of the reason why. Irwin has had at least, I'd say, eight points by, by now in terms of leveling up uh, over the course of two plus seasons. He, he was in the 60s in feedback when we started. And it was for that reason that this one is when you're in practice how long does it take to get that five out of five to where you can go back into the pits and make adjustments to the car this is why some people say oh it's so easy to get a hundred percent race setup it is if you have red bull as your team and you've already got somebody who's you know high 80s or, or low 90s in in that feedback loop when it starts in the 60s and even now into your third season is just reaching a 76 because I've literally put every single point into this that is why that is the primary reason why us reaching setup is trickier uh, getting that max setup because we are getting you know two runs less three runs less than what make a team would be getting slowly but surely he's getting there and you know we're sticking with him we might as well at at this point there's no reason to swap him out with with somebody else uh, even if it's only money meanwhile jago is a little bit better and he's about to get his next point rising above an 80 now to an 81 and again that communication is the one that's very much lagging behind and you can see why our pit times are so similar team to team as we have what was it, an 83 and an 84 between the two guys? It's almost identical, which is why their pit stop times are almost identical. Because again, the other contributing factor is is identical for, uh, across the whole of the team. Uh, but bit of a feedback advantage, you know, plus, what is it, five points uh, for Jago compared. And that's why poor share is consistently a step ahead when it comes to that feedback loop. And with that new year upon us and that big beginning of year setback, here's just a quick check-in on that pit crew and what their current ratings are. Now, tire changes are already ahead and is the, the timely uh, bit wing adjustment. It, it would be nice to have that, but it lagging behind is kind of the best. Having a balance between the other three with tire change being slightly ahead I think is the most favorable situation in terms of time gains. Front and rear jacks plus car release are fractions of a second, where tire changes take that, you know, that two seconds of that time frame. So it's more impactful having that higher. The wing adjustment overall is the most time sensitive but it's the one you use the least often 
a standard pit stop, you know, you, you want the others. If we could get them up to 100, then yes, I'd be thrilled to have that wing adjustment. But we just can't seem to make progress. It seems to be in a revolving cycle that keeps it right about the same. Uh, the downside to that one is I don't see a way that we gain on some of the other big teams. We are slower in the pit stops than they are. Uh, does the influence of that crew chief make a difference? I don't know if it makes a big enough difference. Uh, I, I think we are always going to be half a second behind the other teams, but we're not bad for pit stops. It's not that far off. It's just fact of the matter, I guess. Now, before we enter Jetta, uh, here's my analysis briefly on where I think the teams are at. I think Red Bull is still the strongest team, and I think Ferrari is the second strongest, and I do think that we will ultimately be the third strongest team, at least through the first you know, half or third of the season. We'll see if we can get up there to compete with the top two more consistently, more regularly. I mean, we were just off their pace this time. I mean, I'd say where we're at right now is kind of where Mercedes is at real life, where they are now competing with those two teams. They're definitely not way off the back of them, but they're still a little bit off. They're still not quite there. We're in the not quite there status, but that doesn't mean we will be, you know, that way half a season from now or maybe less. Uh, may not take that many upgrades to kind of get up to par with them. But anyway, uh, I do not think Alfa Romeo is necessarily the third quickest. I think that might have been that track, that race, those circumstances. And I have a feeling that they are more like fifth or sixth right now. Where before, I was very much like, hey, they're they're that fourth best team. They are best of the rest, and they are almost with the top three. No, I, I think they are closer to just being comfortable midfield. Uh, I do think Alpine's in the right place. I do think that Mercedes is absolutely off the pace. They are not in the top three whatsoever. But I do think that they will still ultimately emerge in fourth place, if not fifth. I don't think they're going to be down in sixth. Uh, Aston Martin getting a point for the first time in three seasons. I don't think they're going to score very many more. Uh, I do not think that they are suddenly in a position to score points on a consistent basis. They're going to be more competitive than they were, but I don't think they're, uh, that sudden point is a sign that they're going to finish in 7th place. I still think they are 10th best, maybe ninth best, but they're going to be in their normal position on a regular basis, but maybe not as far off the back. Uh, and, and a big part of that could be you know those big losses that everybody incurred. You know, ultimately, if your base point is a 5 and somebody else's base point is a 10 and you're taking 30% away, 10 minus 30% is going to be a 7. 30% away from a 5 is a 3.5. You're not losing as much ground, and therefore you're backing teams up towards you. Aston Martin has had that benefit as other teams are backing up towards them, and they were already, well, they were good in low speed. That was their better area. No, no, no. Alfa Romeo was good in low speed. Uh, well, anyway. Um, I think Alfa Tauri looks pretty good. They they had a bad outcome in the race, but I, I think their car definitely looks better than what what they got out of that first race weekend. And so Alfa Tauri, you know, expect them to be competing for that 6th or 7th, maybe alongside Alfa Romeo. Uh, and then McLaren, Haas, and, like I said, Aston Martin are definitely the back three. Following a big mistake, and I want to say this was poor Cher putting it in the wall, needing a new wing, he ended up finishing last place a lap down. But at Jetta last year, Albin was 12th. And this was that sign of, hey, I think we're going to be competing for points fairly soon. And this was just right at the beginning of the season. And we were showing a much better pace than what we had had. But it was still not points. We didn't score points in these first two races at all. But breaking down the track, we have a few slower corners, a few medium corners, but a lot of fast sections. Uh, but again, as we are good at cornering, you know, we're, it's balanced. What this doesn't have 
much of is straight sections. This really doesn't have much straight sections at all. Yeah, there's a lot of flat out, but it's flat out while quartering. And therefore, I think we could have pretty dang good pace here as you know that top speed issue that we normally have is not going to be as much of a factor on this track than others there just isn't much in terms of straightaways it's it's not monaco lack of straights but it's lack of straights uh, they think top speed is a good thing here but not a major thing medium and high speed quartering are the major things and again, we are number one in medium speed and what is it, like number five? Third best car in high speed and just off the back of those two best cars. So I think we can compete fairly well with those top two teams this time. Formula One is back. Welcome to one of the fastest circuits on the calendar here at Jeddah. The Saudi Arabian Grand Prix is about to kick off and the atmosphere here is electric. The Jeddah Street Circuit has one of the fastest average speeds as well as the most corners of any track on the calendar. Good high-speed downforce is going to make life in the fast lane a little easier for drivers here this weekend. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. The weekend begins here. Just right at the beginning of practice, and this is going to be pretty much the only practice coverage we get. Uh, car park knowledge is now 85% and climbing, but doing it's a little bit lower because we have a brand new chassis. The first one is ready, and that is all, and I might as well just put it on the car so that we gain the knowledge. If something happens with the chassis, it's not the end of the world. We'll have many more on the way. And we'll them on the car when the time comes but otherwise we're going to run that chassis uh, to gain that knowledge so that when we do have enough of them we, we want it on both cars so uh, tracks are going to be a lot more common here like the Aston Martin that we just drove past because the walls are in tight this track is dangerous it's dangerous they already made some BSC. changes from year one to year two uh, to to help with that a little bit with this track but uh, even with everything turned down, you can see our pace is definitely not bad as, as we're setting out. But let me get on with practice, see you in qualifying. Following practice, things are actually looking pretty good. We got 100% on the acclimatization and the car parts knowledge for Porsche Air now. Also a 97% setup confidence, so he's maxed on his bonuses. Albin is close, and of course it's that track acclimatization. You know, we've only reached that once since giving do an FP1 in since last you know beginning of last season uh car parts knowledge on the chassis is at 91 percent. his setup confidence is 99 so we really nailed things down well this race weekend and i'm pretty encouraged by our practice lap times now of course it's the beginning of the season you don't know, begin with a practice set of parts your first set of parts will ultimately become your practice set and that'll happen either after race three or maybe after this one uh, i'll start using the second set uh, i think i'm more inclined this season as we're going to be more competitive at the the front of the field to eat that three million dollars on each car to have that extra set uh, and therefore i might be utilizing set number one for practice only a little bit earlier into this season uh, but anyway as we have that first set uh you know the car's still in good shape it's not worn down in fact it's probably better than the other cars as we've had now two sets of practice sessions uh, through the first two race weekends that we have had everything turned down therefore that should put us a, a step ahead of most all of the teams and then you know there's the track times are very very close from top of the grid to the bottom of the grid and we're not that far off uh, we, we are actually competing with the others and then when we're on that soft compound even with things turned down all of a sudden we find ourselves in the top 10 so I have a feeling I have a feeling we're gonna be up near the top I don't we're not gonna match Red Bull but near the top easily FP3 uh, Q3 the new tactic this season is to save a set of tires uh, some extra wear. 
we're only making a single run in Q1 these days in the final portion of the session. So one shot, one shot only, but I trust that we have the pace and you don't see the mistakes like you see in real life. So that bank lap is less important than taking that fresh set right at the end of Q1. Uh, yeah, the cars don't do the lockups and, and, and the spins as often. <laughs> It does happen, uh, but not as often. We're taking our chances on that one, but uh, we're saving the tires. So, Corsair, his time. Sixth, fastest. It's actually a little down from where I thought we would be. Albin replaces him at sixth, fastest. So we're, we're six tenths down. I, honestly, I thought we would be a lot closer to uh, the Ferrari Red Bull time. I, I did. I, we're about two tenths off from where I figured we would be. But that's okay. It is competitive. It is almost best of the rest territory as uh, Guan Yu Zhou and the Alpha Tauri uh, battles up there as well. Uh, look to be the only. So the Alpha Tauri looks like who we're going to be most closely matching uh, in qualifying and potentially in the race. And then, of course, pushing on to try to match the Ferraris that we are a few tenths of a second behind. Uh, so this might look a lot like, well, the first race did where we're pushing to try to keep up with those guys and then as the race goes on somewhere losing ground with them somewhere around a pit stop uh, maybe we need to be trying to double stack a little more often with them to uh, just keep up so Q2 is where I'm looking to get the Baker lap now and two guys pull out right in front of us in Ocon and Norris uh, Porsche and Albin both look like they got through quickly but you know that's not the case Albin two seconds down that's not a clean run. That is not a clean run. So uh, Albin's lap was absurdly compromised. Porsche's lap is good right now, currently P5. With all 15 initial laps in, Porsche now sets P7, just behind Hamilton. Good competitive time, and that may be enough already to get us out, as you know we have a half a second cushion over those on the bubble. But Albin, of course everything left to do here in this final run he is the last one out on track can he get the time necessary to uh, get out of q2 and into q3 into that final shot Porsche already down to the bubble and out for now so he will need to improve his time we of course made that first run on used tires so second run here Second run here on the fresh set. Porsche crosses the line and up to P4. Woo! Great time there. Uh, back down to P5 as Leclerc moves ahead, but that is best of the rest for Porsche. What will it be for Albin? Albin, right behind him. Identical time between them. Identical time. And that is more along the lines of what I was hoping for of we're a tenth of, tenth of a second ahead of everybody else. And we're still a couple tenths behind these guys, but that's more like it. That's more like it. I would be very happy if we can replicate this in Q3. And even though we're a little bit off those guys, again, with DRS, we can just about keep up with them. It's a couple tenths of a second off. That's not bad. Uh, and if we're a tenth of a second ahead of everybody else... That's a great sign of things to come. From and in Q3, we've got every team out there, and we are just clear as, I think, one car, Guan Yu Zhou. Yeah, Guan Yu Zhou came out in the way of the guys behind us. It could compromise their times. It does for Stappen. Uh, but for the moment, that's only P7 and P8. Where we, oh, we're on the U set. They're all on the fresh set. That's, that's the reasoning behind that one. Uh, five minutes to go in the session. That was our U set there from uh, Q2. Everybody else used their fresh set right off the bat. They may have two sets, but I doubt it. I doubt it because we saved a set in Q3. Uh, Q1. It will require a better time. We know that Verstappen is going to get a better time. Guan Yu Zhou was compromised as he compromised Well, Verstappen primarily. Uh, and Guan Yu Zhou didn't get a good lap in so he's not going to get a good lap in in the end that's probably going to cost him he'll get a better time uh, but that's probably going to cost him a top position 
And what we've got to do is try to get ahead of Hamilton, who put in a pretty solid lap time. Perez looks like he was compromised as well, just not as bad as Verstappen was. Will that give us a chance to start ahead of P5, P6? Do we have any chance at pole here? Well, I'd say not with the two Ferraris. I don't think we're going to match that, even with our best time. But the Red Bulls were compromised. They're on a used set. They're not going to be quite as fast. Can we take advantage of that? Can we turn that into something? Uh, let's go ahead and ride on board. It's Porsche we're riding with this time. Albin, of course, on the fresh chassis could put in the better time. So let's go ahead and switch to his onboard view. And again, this is now from P7 and P8. But we are the ones with the fresh set here. So how are those lap times looking so far? Verstappen, purple, but then yellow as those tires are falling off. So he's not going to put in a great time. It's not going to be as good. It's still good enough to beat the Ferraris, which means I don't think we are going to uh, be competitive. But what about Perez? Can we beat Perez? Can we get ahead of one car here? We are green in both sectors. Uh, nobody else really improving. Guan Yu Zhou does a little bit, but only good enough for P7 right now. It puts him ahead of Botas, and that's about it. I do think we are going to be somewhere right around that P5, P6. Maybe. Maybe. We can get one guy onto that second row with uh, P4. Good so far with both cars. Porsche, P5. Not good enough to beat Perez. And Albin, not even good enough to beat Porsche. Boy, oh boy. Just off. Yeah, we're, we're still... We're definitely off. But we are that tenth of a second ahead of the midfield. Those front two teams are still just a little bit out of reach here in the early stage of the season. But I'll take it. That's It's going to be a good starting grid position and a, a real sign of, like I said, where we're at. We are definitely third best right now. We're not quite there with those top two teams. It, it's a power two right now, but we are very much in that best of the rest status. Can we replicate that during the race? Are we going to have a nice solid P5, P6? Maybe a mistake from one of the top four can put us up into, like, say, P4, P5. Last time it was P5, P6. Race day has arrived, and the time has come for these drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel. Qualifying went well for Williams, as attested by their strong position on the grid. Now it's all about finding that edge for the race itself. We saw a solid qualifying performance from Ferrari, and they're sure to have their chance to push even further during the race. The weather is very overcast here, and teams are staring at the sky watching for the first sign of rain. Strategies might have to be quite flexible going into today's race. Well, the streets of Jeddah are a buzz, and the teams are nearly ready for the start of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. The expectation is that a lot of teams are going to opt for a one-stop strategy. Well, I'm going to push the envelope and try something a little bit different. I'm going to go for the two-stopper, thinking that we've got some pace in the car and that we're going to get into some clean air and we're going to see some gaps open up uh, and we're going to see ourselves get away from back group. I think we're going to be faster in the first stint, possibly even be able to get into the race lead as long as the others are, you know, say on the medium. That's going to give us a pace to at least keep up with those front two teams and maybe stretch out from the others. Now, once we do pit the first time, it's going to put us back in the field a little bit, but we have some pace to make some passes. And we have that ability to get back up through the field a little bit. I think we may lose something trying to make some of those passes, though. So we'll see how that one pans out longer term. But then for the final stint, we're going to be able to push harder and definitely make some overtakes if necessary uh, we'll see aggressive strategy may not be the best call the one stopper is probably the smarter way to go uh, but go big or go home right <laughs> we're gonna go for it this race cloudy skies tonight with the drivers now having taken position on the grid looking now at the Williams a top 10 position today but will they be able to capitalize on it? And then we've got Alex Albon. Not as close to the front as they might have wished for, 
but we know the race order can change a lot during those first few corners. The race start is mere seconds away. We're now moments away from this, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go. One of these days I'll be smart enough to start splitting strategies, especially when we are that best of the rest kind of team, not far off from what everybody else is doing. Let's see how many teams have opted to go with what we're doing, and it's looking like not too many, a few towards the back end, about five other cars on our strategy. Hamilton, Ricardo, let's we'll see if we can get away from them. I think Juan Yujo is going to help hold up that group behind and give us a little more space. I'm hoping for. I think we can definitely get Perez under these circumstances, though he is in that faster red horse and really not on his signs of repair. But if we can get up behind, say, Verstappen and start to open a gap behind with like, Hamilton, remember Hamilton's car is not quite where it normally is. Albert is the one behind. Why don't you go ahead and set up save those tires for a little bit lifting uh, and let Porsche okay, try okay. to uh, make his way past. I can't both be pushing just the one. Let's see if Porsche can. He's all over the back of Perez right now. Somebody locked up. So far, Porsche are unable to find space to get around Perez. We're taking a little bit difficult here, especially without the straight line advantage. Right, you're better in the corners, but you can't ma actually make up any ground. Overtaking it looks a little more complicated than expected here. Multiple cars have crashed. Multiple cars have crashed. This going to lead to a virtual safety car or safety car situation. Magnussen has picked up a penalty. Ocon has also picked up a penalty, and the back half of the grid just lost a lot of ground. Okay. One of the uh, Alpines are going to get into the back of Hamilton. Yes, they do. You can clearly see the contact there. Oh, there's not much in that at all. Quick safety car that time and we are already back and underway on racing and Ocon and Magnuson never even reached the back end of the grid as the safety car has pulled off and we're down to just three other cars on the soft compound now as a couple guys switch very early to the hard compound just lap number five now. Uh, Porsche. I mean this is ex just extending the life of what we had adding a little fuel giving us the ability to push on. Porsche will continue to try to put Perez under pressure on that medium compound uh, while Albin kind of sits on, uh, extending his life a little bit on this run. We are up beside Perez now. Can we get by? We are more than a half car length ahead and we have completed his move. So drain through the battery just like that. That's going off the quick, but at least we have gotten up beside him. Uh, we're doing, also having a look against the Ferrari. Can we make a double overtake here? We are up beside him. No, we tuck in. Uh, but that is P4 now for Porsche. As Porsche is getting past right now, We have the regular pace, but Perez, we, we go to harvest for just a moment, and just like that, we go backwards. We were all over the back of Perez ever since the start. We easily get back ahead of him going neutral again. At least there's that, but harvesting is just... really seem to lose a lot of pace once and you a new uh, position go into that mode. Just gained by Williams. Having some open air would be really nice. 
uh, let's go ahead and switch our view here and start getting what those intervals are like. Are we we are more than a second ahead of Guan Yu Zhou, so Guan Yu Zhou is not going to get the benefit of DRS, though it is awfully close. Just ate through his battery as he's up beside Perez now. Can he at least complete that overtake? Or we're still well, we're going to have to go back neutral. He does. Okay. Put him on harvest now. But is he going to get re overtaken by doing so? And there's an overtake from Williams. So that's both cars ahead of Perez. Again, signs losing those front two, and Ricardo's now that leader, and he's more than two seconds down. So, yes, we are slowly starting to pull away from that group. Uh, what we want to keep an eye on is that pit window where you know where would we be coming out at uh, as you can see we're starting to enter i do have albin offset by one lap in terms of pit strategy he's expected to extend now that safety car means i will extend by a lap or two uh, uh, corsair by the way got a, got around and albin good job good job Actually, I think we're with the extra pushing. We're kind of keep right keep pushing, keep pushing. Be, aren't we? Red Bull gained the yeah. place. We're only going to extend by maybe one lap right now. But the reality is, is if we have these guys, we pull away from those guys. We want to extend as long as we can, as long as we're not falling off on pace. It's going to allow us to push the other compounds and push on later if we're not losing anything, especially if we're opening the gaps, you know, behind. Bell Alonzo Sonoda, the other guys, and you see how they did go forward on that soft compound? It worked out for them. It sort of worked out for us, but not really because there's no big gaps behind. And that safety car actually really hurt that. Just open the, the field up a bit. Porsche is all the way down to P6. What the heck happened to you, buddy? Alvin, don't lose that one second gap, please. He might have lost it. I have lost it. How do you lose those two? And then allow Ricardo to get within one second. Boy, that's terrible race management. It's really Porsche who set that one up. Porsche went backwards, backwards, backwards really quick, where Albin was refilling the battery and comfortably on the back, but then all of a sudden Porsche makes essentially a mistake and, and, and drop back. 1.6 back of him. Feel really not well. The fields at least spread out into little groups. Uh, somebody's locked up. Uh, that does mean we're gonna have to doesn't really kind of pit here. We'll, we'll only extend here by a lap. We we need a push. Actually, you know what? Let's let's switch this up. Alvin's the one that's in P4. It's Leclerc. Leclerc has gone backwards with the lockup. He rejoins well back. Well, that's good. Uh, we are going to pit with Albin, and that is going to be to the hard compound. I uh, want him to go full attack this lap. Porsche is the one who's going to extend out of the way. Loss of two seconds. Not very welcome under the circumstances. And where we're going to come out at is probably behind Ocon. Actually, maybe even worse, as we are seven seconds on the back, so it's only 20 seconds ahead of these guys. We're going to be all the way down in this place. That's going to be enough for uh, trying to make overtakes. Start 
Okay, I've got a, we don't have much of a choice. Time really is what it is. We've got to pay. Look at reducing the lift and cop. So Alvin goes to head in. Corsair now full attack for him. For one more. You go push. This strategy is not looking good. At not looking good. I think if anything, we're, we're going to have to try to one stop her from here. But I just don't know. I don't know how well we're going to make 35, 36 laps. 2.7 on the stop there. Okay, we want to increase lift and coast. Yeah, I, I think we're going to need it to here ish before things fall off. It's just not good. It's not sound. Uh, Albin, better than expected. He comes out in P15. So that's P14, P15. Let's watch our gaps to the leaders. 25.5. Are we at least holding with Verstappen, who is a bit ahead now? Sainz 4.2, Perez 4.4, Leclerc's mistake definitely hurt his position. What will our pace be? Those guys are holding at seven and a half. Not by much, but that's compared to the leader. Most everybody else is going back. You show Ricardo eight and a half seconds back. So they've lost a second. We've gained a second. And Verstappen into the pits already. Ricardo, Russell, Leclerc. I think we can probably make these last. I mean, we only pit a couple laps early. We only pit a couple laps early. I think we're gonna go. We're gonna try to go the distance, make the one stopper work, and ultimately it's just an undercut situation. Let's hope for a virtual safety car at some point to to give us the tire life that we need, or even a full safety car. Where will we come out at already? P11, P12. Ricardo comes out behind us. couple seconds down so we do have that advantage over him as we continue to close up on Ocon I think we are just getting into that DRS range and yes we do so Porsche is now going to close up quickly on Ocon <laughs> very quickly indeed Porsche harvest for the fastest time being Porsche gets fastest lap uh, and that DRS that DRS just pulled us right on up there uh, signs pits and comes out just ahead of us. So we're right back with signs now. Only problem for us is that we have used up 10% tire life in the handful of laps that we since we pit compared to them. So we've got to extend tire life by about 10%. Able to get around so far. Ricardo has caught up now to this train. So what DRS? I gave you the overtake. I didn't put you on. You didn't even do anything, Porsche. You haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> Yikes. From 60% to zero. There's not even much of a straightaway here. Sides is already up two spots now. Come on, you're up beside him. You're up beside him. Pushing on, pushing on. There you go. Okay. There's one. That was good. Ocon's the next target. These guys should be pitting Back soon, off. so hopefully we'll get out of our way. And there's an overtake from Williams. Alvin still unable to get a the Aston Martin. Seriously, now if you got it. Burned through his yes. battery without doing anything too, and is now getting passed by Ricardo. Yep, copy. If you're not going forwards, you're going backwards. This rule of GT racing. This is Formula One. Alvin driving like absolute crap. Ricardo's not pushing. AI doesn't push. 
you used up your battery. You were going aggressive, and look, you're a second behind now. You're having a freaking awful time. Besides his couple laps late in that first run where Porsche went from third down to sixth in a couple of laps. Outside of that, it's been all Porsche and Alvin's struggle. Okay, these guys have not pit because they're on the hard to mediums where the mediums to hard. Norris is the only one left who has not pit yet. Guys are still at 50%. The advantage is not that big. 24 laps in, they all pit probably five laps or so. So I think we really need to just kind of settle in. Um, Signs has managed to go forward, and we have not. Signs is leading the train. What happens when Morris pits? Is Stroll going to lose that DRS? Still harvesting. In danger of getting passed by Alonzo. You're supposed to be pushing here. What? Why? Why is, why is your pace so so bad? Got some momentum here. Okay, we can easily overtake. Okay, copy. He gets up beside Ricardo. He got that momentum, he got that run. Good, and we're going to turn that into a pass. Okay, and we've got the straight here. We've got some more momentum. Can we do a triple overtake in two, three quarters? Come on, Alvin. Come on, Alvin. Get in there. That's two. He got the alpha. That's good. That's good. Which Gasly got around, so. That's more than three years faster. And he's through. And he is through. Overtake. Down harvest. There you go, Norris into the pit. Norris is currently disabled. <laughs> Ocon easily goes through on Stroll, and Alvin's doing it again, right? He did it all for one, where he had three overtakes in two quarters, and then otherwise was just sucking. But he's doing the same thing now. Couldn't get around Stroll, couldn't get around Stroll, couldn't get around Stroll. Wow, stuck side by side with Ocon, and then Ocon just plows right out of and we're still stuck behind. Stroll is really holding this up. Where Porsche is just driving away now. 2.7 ahead. Back to balance for Porsche. And he's five and a half seconds behind signs. And now Leclerc is going fast. So again, Alvin going backwards instead of forwards. We tell him to push, and he's going backwards. Claire is 1.2 behind as he went around Stroll, but Stroll is very much off the pace. Where's this charged battery? Well, you've been on harvest for a long time here. Okay, so front runners are going to start, but late pitters are going to start getting that in. Uh, Botas has not yet. Ocon has not yet. Okay, there's a big crash. Oh, we have a crash. Red! Red! 
flag. Red flag. This is flag. perfect for Botas. Uh, we can take a look now. But this now is going to be good for us. This is going to be good for us. Russell looks like he might have clipped the inside or just lost it. Uh, very, lost the rear wrong, on man. on the curbing. Red flag comes and out. Was and Mercedes Day is completely the ruined. They have no cars and finishing this race. Really hurt. I don't have. No, I do have mediums. I do have mediums. Fresh mediums. Those mediums, they'll they'll go to the end. It's a couple laps early for us. Means we're gonna have to run, you know, neutral for here, uh, just for the overtakes. We're gonna have to overtake Botas, but the mediums will seemingly get us to the end. We'll see what the others opt to do as we come back from the red flag. Standing start on the grid with we're ready one to get car this race really out of position with Botas who have yet to pit. Soft compound all around us. Botas on the mediums, but soft compound. These guys are going to have to pit again. They're not going to make it. 16 laps on those. We already tried to push, and it was, what, 14? 14 was a real stretch. These guys are going to really lose pace the last couple laps if they try to stretch with those. But that means not forward other than Porsche or ahead of Botas. Uh, and Leclerc gets past Porsche right off the line. Backwards. Oh, this soft compound around us. These guys are gaining out and down to P9. Somebody with a big lock up is going to go to the very back of the grid. So it looks like no, that's not the case. Guan Yu Zhou doesn't lose anything. He's P10. He just settles in behind Alvin. Spare fuel there to push, but looks like we're going to be pushing later as the medium is going to easily make the distance that we need. Where others are going to fall off late, so we're going to be making passes late. Let's reduce not early. Let's close by one level. Okay, checking in on the Porsche. Porsche, we do need to get on the We want to leave Cook, please. POS. You want to get replaced by Dylan? Keep driving on the pace. The fuel up. Copy. Porsche has closed in on the top three and has pulled away by more than a second to Botas, which means the DRS will not be his friend. Alvin still has Leclerc at the front of the train now and then Guan Yu Zhou to get past. We are side by side on the outside and into... Not yet, not yet. Into P2, into P1! Double overtake and Porsche leads. Porsche leads. Looks like a good move for Williams. Can he pull away from these two? Can he pull away? Back with Alvin. Alvin's up to P5. He has gotten around Leclerc as Guan Yu Zhou. I'm guessing this is a DRS overtake situation. Drive away. Can we drive away? All right. Uh, Porsche, meanwhile. Uh, Verstappen pits. 
Verstappen into the pits, and that is P1, P3. We are on the podium with just a few laps to go. Or share, seven tenths of a second ahead of signs. Joe and Leclerc both pit. Over a second ahead. Is that the sector zone or is that a DRS? It was DRS. And he got it. But he's still almost a second behind. So continue to deploy. Back over a second. DRS should be just before the corner here, just before the hairpin. And he closed right up on us. He closed right up on us. How did he manage to do that without DRS? Seven. Final two laps, almost down to the final lap. Meanwhile, with Albin, comfortably P3 and two and a half seconds pulling away from Botas. But not gaining quickly enough on Sainz. His gap to Porsche is remaining the same, and Sainz is falling off. But it's five seconds. It is five seconds, so I can catch him. He can't afford to drop back. And we definitely don't have any battery to do yeah, so. Sure. Just see them off in the distance as the final lap you opening your last is lap. underway. Porsche. And Porsche is making his way around the final corner. And will claim victory. Check the DRS. Yep, copy. Science takes P2 and okay, Albin check it, check it, on the podium. Double podium for the team. A 1 3 finish. 1 3 finish. The red flag was perfect for us because I was definitely thinking about that one stopper and there was cars that were good to go to the end. I think we would have been somewhere around P5, possibly with Porsche. Thanks, uh, guys. And Albin was going to be. Yeah, nice Alvin job. Nice be. job. So that red go flag was absolutely perfect. Perfect for us. We made the right call. All those guys going on sauce. Didn't work out. Signs was the only one who held on and you know, his tires were totally done. While we weren't really going forward very a well at the end either. For the it was a lot better than what he had. Fastest lap, of course, goes to the guys that pit right at the end. Even if those were used softs that they put on with the low fuel it would have been enough to uh, put in the fastest lap, a 130.6, almost a full you know, second faster than what we managed. But we pick up 40 points in the constructors. Huge day. I mean, you know, our, our two main competitors had 18 points total. Perez Verstappen only got back to P11, P12. They didn't even get back to the points. Completely ruined their own race strategy. So a lot of cars that wouldn't normally be here picking up points today and of course we pick up the majority that's going to be a big boost Porsche <laughs> it's only two races folks but Porsche leads the drivers championship and we lead the constructors 14 points ahead right now big boost in particular for our bid for a top three I don't think it's I don't think we are anywhere near the conversation yet for a constructors championship. Not this year. We are we are not on their pace. But we are going to compete with them fairly regularly. So can we squeeze our way above third? Maybe. I don't think I don't think we're going to necessarily touch the Red Bull, but a huge strategy blunder for them sees them score 0 points today. That 43, I think they're going to have a lot of those race weekends like we had. We had 40 we had 40. That's not going to be the normal. But this is a good one. This is a very good one. All right, folks, this is going to do it for this episode. I'm a Kathleen Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.